Hello, beautiful world. I am April Davis Campbell, and I'm the pastor at Trinity Presbyterian Church in Woodbury, Minnesota. And I am thrilled that you are joining me today for a little spiritual nourishment for your soul, a 10-minute prayerful pause, an opportunity for you to rest and abide and be present and attentive to the way that God might be speaking to you this day. I know it's uh, winter and here in the Twin Cities it's cool and we look for snow on a regular basis and it makes me think of solitude. I don't know if it's the dreary nature of the day or just um, after the holidays and being a pastor and having been around um, people, like I'm sure you have been around people, maybe you were with some family or some friends. Um, sometimes the solitude is something that we need to reflect on as we come off of times of joyous times and sometimes after times of struggle and stress. I don't know, maybe you are someone that being around family can be stressful or disappointing because we have certain expectations that Maybe they're unmet and that can be a struggle too. So today I thought we would sit in the space of wondering about being alone, wondering about solitude and what that can do for us. One of the things that I was thinking about as I was reflecting on this is um, in the Old Testament, we hear about the, the nature and the need for time away and time of reflection, specifically in Deuteronomy. And I'm reading today from Eugene Mess Eugene Peterson's translation called the message. Ah, I guess I'm a little confused and need some solitude as well. So um, this comes to us when we're talking about Moses and his interacting with God or um, Adonai. And the, the reading goes like this. Um, he, he's talking to the people of Israel. When I climbed the mountain to receive the slabs of stone, the tablets of the covenant that God made with you, I stayed there on the mountain for 40 days and nights. I ate no food, I drank no water. Then God gave me the two slabs of stone engraved with the finger of God. They contain word for word everything that God spoke to you on the mountain out of fire on the day of the assembly. It was at the end of the 40 days and nights that God gave me the two slabs of stone, the tablets of the covenant. This is an opportunity where um, Moses is talking to the people of Israel and he's reminding them that he needed time away. He took time away and not only um, you know, the 40 days and the 40 nights, but it was time to um, fast, time to cleanse himself. And it makes me think about the ways that we could um, find solitude, find some time and space to be alone. So I also have two little verses here from the New Testament because it's not uh, not surprising, I would imagine, that Jesus also talks to us about that need to um, find peace and some rest and some solitude. Um, again, from the message by Eugene Peterson, and this text is from Mark chapter 1. When it was still night, way before dawn, he got up. Jesus got up and went out to a secluded spot and prayed. Simon and those with him went looking for him. They found him and said, everybody's looking for you. Um, Jesus was notorious for reminding us that when, t when times are stressful and chaotic, those are the times when you need peace and quiet and solitude. You need conversation with God the most. And this is um, also from the message by Eugene Peterson. This is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 6. At about the same time, he climbed a mountain to pray. He was there all night in prayer before God. And the next day, he summoned his disciples. From them, he selected 12 he designated as apostles. So prayer was not something that was just a task to be managed or to be checked off your list. For Jesus, prayer, um, that time alone, that solitude was necessary for him to rest and abide in God's presence. I 
wanted to share with you a little bit today. This is from, I've shared with you um, from this before. This is Constellations by David White. And I'd like to share with you a little bit about what he says um, about being alone. So another way of understanding that sense of solitude. He writes, alone is a word that stands by itself, carrying the austere, solitary beauty of its own meaning even as it is spoken to another. It is a word that can be felt at the same time as an invitation to death and as an imminent threat, as in all alone, with its returned echo of abandonment. Alone is a word that rings with a strange finality, especially when contained in that haunting aggregate, left all alone, as if the state of one's experience begins to define and engender its own inescapable world. The first step in spending time alone is to admit how afraid of it we are. Being alone is a difficult discipline. A beautiful and difficult sense of being solitary is always the ground from which we step into a contemplative intimacy with the unknown. But the first portal of aloneness is often experienced as a gateway to alienation, grief, and abandonment. To find ourselves alone or to be left alone is an ever-present, fearful, and abiding human potentiality of which we are often unconsciously and deeply afraid. To inhabit silence in our aloneness is to stop telling the story altogether. To begin with, aloneness always leads to rawness and vulnerability, to a fearful simplicity, to not recognizing and to not knowing, to the wish to find any company other than not knowing, the unknown self, looking back at us then silent in the mirror. At the beginning of the 21st century, to feel alone or want to be alone is deeply unfashionable. To admit to feeling alone is to reject and betray others as if they're not good company and do not have entertaining, interesting lives of their own to distract us. And to actually seek to be alone is a radical act. To want to be alone is to refuse a certain kind of conversational hospitality and to turn to another door and another kind of welcome, not necessarily defined by human vocabulary. I think it's this paragraph that I find the most engaging, that is captivating for me. Because we do live in a context that tells us you should be engaged all the time. We have smartphones, we have the internet, we have a constant stream of chaos coming at us. It's like we're told something's wrong with you if you want to be alone, if you need that sense of solitude. So what he says really resonates with me. To admit to feeling alone is to reject and betray others as if they're not good company and do not have entertaining or interesting lives of their own to distract us. And to actually seek to be alone is a radical act. Mm. A radical act. How would people experience you if you said, I'm going to unplug, I'm not available for the next hour or half an hour, if an hour might kill you? How would you experience that time of being totally disconnected for an hour or half an hour? So how would you experience it? I wonder what you would get out of it. I wonder how it might, in that radical act of disconnecting, how might that time, that space, that window become an opportunity, not just of solitude and being alone, but an opportunity for you to recharge. I wonder if there are ways that you yearn for that space to be alone and not in the way that people perceive it as a negative thing. But I wonder if you could search out that solitude as a way to take care of yourself. 
search out that solitude as a radical act of self-care. I think that's my invitation for you and perhaps for me as well. Find a space where you can totally disconnect. Find a space, whatever window, whatever size it looks like, 15 minutes, a half an hour, 10 minutes. Find a space for you to embrace the solitude, for you to disconnect from the world around you and settle into yourself so that you can really hear how God is speaking to you this day. I think not only will you hear differently, my sense is that you will be recharged as well. That is my hope and my prayer and my gift for you this day. An invitation to disconnect, find some space to be alone, find some solitude, live into that radical act of quietness. I hope you have a great day. If you're interested in learning more about Trinity Presbyterian Church, you can check us out online at trinitywoodbury.org. I will see you next year. Bye-bye.